Polycythemia vera is a slow-growing blood cancer that is driven by almost always a mutation in the JAK2 gene. This JAK2 mutation that is acquired by blood cells, and specifically blood stem cells, leads to excessive proliferation of all sorts of blood cells, but primarily red blood cells. Polycythemia vera can be diagnosed in patients who have absolutely no symptoms. One actually common presentation is that a patient comes to their primary care physician and it comes to light that their hemoglobin is elevated or their red cell count is high. And that incidental finding uh, can often trigger uh, more and more testing uh, that leads to the diagnosis of polycythemia vera. Patients who do have symptoms uh, can have subtle symptoms. Um, they can be a little more fatigued, a little more short of breath. Uh, they can have some headaches. You know, a lot of these symptoms are not specific and can happen in any healthy individual. Polycythemia vera is treated in a number of different ways. The general theme in treating polycythemia vera is controlling the red blood cell count. The go-to strategy for patients who um, you know, are typically low risk is doing phlebotomies to uh, get their counts in a good range. A phlebotomy is essentially um, taking out large volumes of blood so that you can normalize that blood count as much as you can. However, there are treatments that are able to reduce your blood cell count over time. We refer to these treatments as cytoreductive therapy. Here at Cornell, uh, our practice is typically to evaluate patients' need for a cytoreductive therapy. And if they do need it, we make an informed decision as to whether they should receive interferon alpha or Pegasus, um, or whether they should receive hydroxyurea. In addition to doing phlebotomies and cytoreductive therapy, uh, we do advise that patients uh, go on aspirin because that has been shown to reduce the frequency of blood clots and cardiovascular events.